So this then the lineup for the final of the women's individual lightweight single skulls for the European Championships. And standing out, I think, very much there, the experienced uh, Michaela Taup of Austria, who must have a major chance of taking this title. And she very much for me is the single sculler to beat here. We start though furthest away, Enrica Marasca representing Italy in lane one, furthest away from you. Next to her, Claire Lamb for Ireland. Again, some good rebuilding going on in the Irish rowing scene at the moment. Then in lane three, representing Austria. And it's interesting how many Austrian crews have entered here and have advanced to the final stage. Michaela Taup Treya. Then Greece, uh, Katarina Nikolaidou in lane four. Two from the bottom of your picture will be Marie Anne Franken representing Holland and closest to you for representing Cyprus in lane number six. Here she is, Anna Yonu. Anna Ayano. Italy, Ireland, Austria, Greece, the Netherlands and Cyprus. This is the A final of the women's lightweight single skull. Watching for us will be Javier and Fran. Well, this is more like a, a training piece, really, in these, these conditions. They're going to be almost nine minutes as we look at Tate Petrao there, the Austrian, um, who's the very hot favourite for this race, uh, impressive throughout this regatta. Um, yeah, it's interesting that the world best time just reminds you, Constanta Pipota or Borcicca, she was one of the great Romanian individual and uh, also lightweight double scholars for Romania, 7.28, but that was back in 1994. And the European best time was set here early in the regatta by the Greek scholar, Katarina Nicolaidou, in lane number four. So, as you would expect, Martin, based on times, based on performance, getting into the final here, lanes three and four. And we're away, and again, another very good, clean, even start. Really nothing to choose between the six gullers and given that they've all weighed in at the maximum limit of 59 kilos this is what you will call an even struggle in these conditions yeah i think it will be a bit of a struggle it depends really you know if you get a close race in the last uh, 500 meters it's going to be really tough uh, but you see i think uh, in the lead there that's uh taper trower already establishing coming up to the what in effect is almost that first bridge kind of 200 meter mark as, uh, as they come out that's the first of the three bridges that sort of embrace the course here uh, La Catuya Pasarela is the name of that particular bridge and now you can see that the Austrian scholar now establishing an advantage. Two from the bottom of your picture, Marie and Franken of Holland, who would be just about in second place at the moment in the white cap. Two from the bottom of your picture in second place. And then stretching away just at the moment, Enrica Marasca, right at the top of your picture, Italy, just losing position early on in the race. Yeah, I think uh, the Italian, she had to qualify through uh, the repertoire. She came second to Anna Yonano, the, the Cypriot, um, just ahead of the Czech, Daniela uh, Natalazova, we've seen in the small final. So I think really the interest is, is going to be in that uh, centre lane. A, a big talking point for me is, as we look through the field at Taper Trail, next to her in lane two in the green is the Irish sculler. And Claire Lamb. Yeah, Claire Lamb. Now, Ireland have had a big change in their coaching structure. Really, they're, they're fighting, fighting, fighting to get back on the international scene. And they've hired Morten Esperson, who is one of the FISA consultants and the Danish coach uh, who's, who's coached in many countries, actually. But he is now heading up the Irish Challenge as we look at uh, Taper Trail briefly going through the 500 metres. So just to give you an idea, David, I mean... Taper Trail went through in two minutes and, and eight seconds. Um, and that is going to be some, what, 12, 15 seconds slower than if they had, you know, a nice tail breeze blowing. So 
had a brief word with Morton early this morning, uh, just before coming over here. I bet, he was, uh, I, I bet he was nervous about this race. Well, he, I said to him, how are, you get, how are you enjoying, how are you getting on with the Irish thing? He said, well, I'm beginning to. He said, in Denmark, we always say uh, a thousand thanks. He said, but when I arrived in Ireland, they all say a million thanks. Yeah. <laughs> or tanks. So that's a good race from uh, the, the Greek scholar, um, Ekaterina Nicoladou. And um, as far as as her pedigree she was 10th uh, in the women's doubles in Varese when the European Championships were held here so it was a big big step up for her she's second a silver medal in the under 23s in track eye and uh, again one of Gianni Costiglioni's hope for the future of Greek rowing because so many of his stars have, have stopped because of the economic crisis after London 2012 and these are these are youngsters coming through so Ekaterina Nicoladou with that under 23 silver medal she'll certainly know what it means to compete she um, qualified uh, was it at the Olympic qualification we got her trying to get into the Olympics didn't make it there finished last in the final yeah, I mean she's only 20 and she's now coming up to vie with Michaela Tauptraer who when you look you know her experience is what she's 38 so uh, a yeah. huge difference in age here and huge difference in experience but encouraging and Michaela's just responded there it's quite interesting she uh, the Greek scholar came up to her and now she's just pushed a little bit more in the closing parts of this second quarter here to just maintain her advantage and the effect of this as you can see is to give them almost clear water over Marie and Franken, who had that reasonably bright start for the Netherlands, but she's the best part of two seconds off the pace at the moment. Then Claire Lamb, who's just lost position there, along with the Italian scholar and the Cypriot scholar Iono. Yeah, I, I, I just think it's a fantastic race developing because you know you've got the two heat winners, Taper Trau beat uh, Claire Lamb to win her heat, and uh, Ekaterina Nicoladou beat the Dutch scholar to win hers and the times are pretty similar um, to 1500 metres both of them in the heat did 551 um, but it was in the last 500 metres actually that uh, the Greek scholar Ekaterina Nicolada really did open it up now Taper Trow is going to know that and she's got to work really to maintain that lead but through her mind is going to be thinking when I looked at those splits you know that the heat back on Friday that Greek scholar really really did open it up and and the Austrian who's, who scales for the Nautilus Club in Klagenfurt when she's at home is going to be passing under that bridge with what a narrow lead and a, a sense of foreboding because I think Ekaterina Nicolado is sculling very very well she's got a good rating in this win not put off by the conditions and uh, nicely connected blades at the front so there's a nice sweep there Taper Trow she's sculling long they look at a little sort of you know, I just wonder if she's got the capacity to really raise the sprint, and, and that's what it's going to come down to with 500 metres to go. Yeah, she just lifted it a little bit more, the Austrian, uh, as you were speaking there, and you can see that as they uh, cross that particular boy line there, it gives you an idea that she's just sort of well aware of exactly what you were saying, Martin, that she needs to have that cushion to hold off what she's expecting to come from the young Greek sculler who is fearless. Nothing yeah. to lose, everything to prove. Well, I think, you know, that as far as the coaches go, you say go out and take a big sculp. I mean, Tate Petrao is a big sculp. She's, uh, she finished second uh, when this event was held in the European Championships in 2010 in, the, in, in Portugal. Um, she's the name to put on your sort of... Uh, list of people I've beaten but it's going to be fascinating the last 500 meters well we're well into that now the last quarter of the lightweight women's single skulls and it's now that a Katarina Nicolaidou produces what uh, she has suggested all the way through the regatta that when it comes to the last quarter she can accelerate away and that's what she's doing there it took a long time for Michaela to, to actually achieve that victory back in 2010 but now you can see possibly a bright future yeah. ahead well, for she, the young Greek scholar yeah you know Postiglione is going to be loving this uh, coach 
Gianni Postiglioni, but she's put the right up to 34. I mean, uh, she knew this was where she was going to win the race. She tracked Tay Petrao all the way down the course. And look, she's just moving away. Tay Petrao, really her job now is to try and hang on to the lead that she's got over uh, Marianne Frink and the Dutch sculler. We can see there in third place. That looks like the one, two, three with a couple of hundred meters left. But a really impressive tactical race there from uh, Ekaterina Nicolado. She's really kept to form. I think when she put the rating up to 34 for that sprint, she kind of knew she was going to win the race and got 100 metres to go and very impressive. Yeah, there's nothing that Michaela could do. She was actually the runner-up in 2010 to Marie-Louise Dreger for uh, Germany. But this is going to give her a big confidence boost and sort of boost you really need to go out and train hard and move further and Gianni will be hopefully looking for a partner for her in good time for the Olympic category of lightweight women's double skulls and it's a victory for Greece silver to Austria and then across the line in third place the Netherlands that's Marie and Franken Ireland Claire Lamb in fourth place Italy, Enrica Marasca in fifth, and Anna Ianu of Cyprus finishing in sixth place. But maybe a little name for the notebook, Martin. Yeah, well, I mean, she's definitely, she's got a, a name for herself from coming uh, second in the under 23 doubles. I mean, that's no mean feat at all uh, last year. Silver medal in that, and I think she's shown she's a fearless racer. We saw off the start how you know Taper Trow got that good start tried to dominate the race that's her strength in the, uh, the middle thousand meters there see there's a lot of patience she's, she's not hurried the way she puts the blades into the catch the Greek sculler you can see there the the sculler in the with the blue and white blades boat number four she, there's no hurry to put those blades in at the front end. She just takes time, grips the ball, even while she's sprinting. It's just really like a very smooth golf swing. And, and you know, she gets good connection, good length. So when she put the rating up to 34 strokes a minute to get through, she had good boat speed as well. And that's crucial. We'll see that time and time again. And, you know, sometimes a lot of women athletes are better than the men at actually being patient and getting connected. So. Um, that's a great result from her and, and ev every right to celebrate 8 minutes 32 seconds I mean that is Brutal. a slow <laughs> slow race it really is confirmation and Ekaterina Nikolaidou perhaps with a, a bright future ahead it will be interesting to 